Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe. We're smashing out draft and off-season content. There is the nightly show, 7pm Monday to Friday. This week, obviously, Wednesday is the cough, so we'll do a live for that. and We'll do a watch-along with everything that's going on in the AFL world. More so, um, stay tuned, because every night at 7 till then, we will be doing a rundown. And then on Thursday, we've got some special guests to do a trade recap and really crank up the draft content with the profiles continuing as of the end of the week and next week. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn that notification bell on, go a step further as well, become a member of the channel. It really helps the channel out and we don't stop in off-season like some channels do. We keep up the content. I've got some special things coming. So I thought I've seen a lot of misinformation on the internet. That seems to be a key niche word, doesn't it, in 2023, misinformation. I've become one of the plebs as well. Jesus. But about what we're doing as a football club. So let's get straight into what Count are doing. Didn't we want depth, Pom? Didn't we want depth? So this is projected with Paddy Dow to be traded. I expect that to be something like a future third. I don't think that'll be too complicated. Obviously, we did do the trade where pick 17 became pick 22 and 26. Um, people get upset about that. Fair enough. Am I upset about it? Not really. And I'll tell you for why. So when you're talking about depth, you've got to understand that Carlton's best 25 is probably set. And Paddy Dow and Mr. Mr. Fisher aren't in it. Let's be honest. They... They aren't in it. That I think we all can safely say they're not. Like you might argue that they could be, but I don't work in could be's. But I think that the future first, right? I mean, the current first 17, Anzac Fisher for 21 and 25, I think is, which now is 22 and 26, is an absolute stellar deal. And what I mean by that is you've got to understand that Zach Fisher, as it stands when we traded him, if you look at Carlton's depth chart, he was ranked seventh best halfback because he was a halfback now. He was a halfback. Paddy Dow was the sixth as it stands. And that we base that depth chart on Voss's selections, but also their output. So that makes total sense that you get rid of them and you get something in return. When you are the sixth best midfielder and the sixth best player in your position, you're looking at a pick in your 30s and 50s can replicate that statistically 38.9% of the time within the thir first year. And should they be continued on the second year, you're looking at the high 50s. And then after a third year, you're looking at 60s, 70s. So it's a great risk reward. And it makes sense. It makes total sense that Calvin have a future third. Why? We're going to come on to that a bit later because this is where the big misinformation is. But the Camparellis are scheduled to go at the moment you're looking at late first round and then late second round for the pair of them right a third round pick based on where Carlton finished that's about 100 points additional in there which allows you to match remember the 20 percent thing so getting a future third back gives Carlton some moving room next year with their future third to ascertain them points. We do find traditionally a future first and a future third it, when it's the draft year. So it becomes real life first, real life third becomes two seconds, which is bang on what them points would be with your discount. This is what Carlton have lost, though. You've lost Ed Kerner, Zach Fisher, Josh Honey, Lockie O'Brien. I don't really think anyone will miss them. Sam Philp, OK. Lockie Plowman, retired. Paddy Dow traded provisionally. And pick 17, which means that Carlton's draft hand is 22, 26, 70, and 78, which is brilliant because pick 17 is now pick 19, right? And that would mean 19 and 70 with list spots to fill wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen. So when we're talking about depth, you've got to see what you've lost and what you're getting back in. So I would be confident all but two of them players with 22 and 26, you can replicate very quickly, very quickly in the draft when they're coming in as 6th and 7th. Do you know what I mean? So let that be said. So let's have a look at the senior list breakdown at the moment. So remember, AFL rules, they're quite loose. But at the moment, as it stands today, should they not change them in the next 24 hours, which is always a possibility with the AFL, you never know. But you have three categories of players. You have your senior list, rookie A and rookie B, right? 
So I want you to think about how this works. Your senior list has to be a minimum of 36, right? And then it can go up to 37 and caps out at 38, unless you've got appeasements. Your rookie A can be a maximum of six, unless you've got an appeasement. Gold Coast and North Melbourne currently have an extension on that, so they can go up. And rookie B is three max, right? And they have to be international rookies to get into the third. They can't be Mickey Mouse rookies that they've come through a different avenue. So it's international. Remember, Cal, and have that island reciprocal agreement. So they'll be able to cap it out at three, which means that your total of your list without any amendments, and if you've got some special dispensation, someone like North, someone like uh, Gold Coast, you can go over it, but at the moment it's 45. So that roughly means Cal and have five list spots as it stands on the list. It would mean, though, looking at the picks, you've got four picks with a rookie A, you're going to have promotions because Carlton need to get five more players on their senior list. So at the moment, Carlton's rookie A's are pretty simple, right? That's Sam Durden, Alex Chincotta, Jordan Boyd, Matty Cottrell, Hudson O'Keefe and Alex Murkoff. That's six of them, right? So you would presume two of them get promoted. Take your pick. I would guess, based on senior playing, it would be Matt Cottrell and between Chincotta and Jordan Boyd. A lot of misinformation. The article that when Carlton announced did confirm Matt Duffy and Rob Monaghan, the Irish guys, are cap B. And with the AFL extensions, that as long as the player agrees, Dom Aku will stay cap B. So that basically means, right, when you look at this, we're probably taking two picks in the draft. I would predict then that would take us to 33. Carlton then probably promote two of the rookies in A to 35 and maybe take a delisted free agent and put him on the senior list that's 36, or may do something with their future first now that guarantees them a higher up pick. But it needs to be understood that this draft pool, I categorise the draft pool quite simply, and I think it's a, it's a nice metric in how I do it. But I have gold, silver, bronze, and then paper, basically. So gold is players that I would consider are going to be top players. We're talking the best in the competition, the top 20, let's say, in the competition, top players. So I have three currently, in my opinion, that will reach them levels based on what I've seen historically with my own eyes and data. So that's Reed, Walter and McKercher, I think will be very, 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 very elite. And then there's gold silvers where like Kurt and Dersma, Sanders, or Sullivan, Caddy, Watson, they could be, but they're probably the silver players. Then that probably takes you, by my estimations, you've probably got about 25 are in that silver tier or above. And that's like top five players in your list. Do you know what I mean? The top five. And then after that, I see a lot of bronzes. And what these are, are top 15, top 20 players in your list. Squad players, I like to call them. And I think there's an awful lot in this draft. But I think it cuts off at around that 40 point mark, 40 picks mark. So Carlton, I think, will probably be after a delisted free agent in the PSD or something to go with that. They may even promote Chincotta, Boyd and Cottrell. And that makes sense. That makes sense because that takes Carlton's senior list to 34, plus them two picks 36, right? Which would mean Carlton could take some rookie punts. So that could be someone like Ned Carl. Um, someone like Ben Ronk could be something like that, Cal, and look at that VFL list and go, you know what, I'm going to promote these guys. Um, or it could be even that pick 70, I reckon, with passes will probably become about pick 50. Could be someone like El Nor or some senior player that they can take from the VFL list. Um, a lot of players are in the draft here who are senior players. It has to be said. A lot of them that have been thrown around by a lot of them, Sean Monaghan, is one of them. Um, I could also see someone like Brody McLaughlin being taken late in the rookie draft and instantly promoted. So let's have a look at how you create that. So didn't we want depth, right? So Ed Kerner, how do you replace that? Now, Ed Kerner was a peripheral figure. He was kind of brought in, in as when. So that could be a draftee or a rookie quite easy because he's not being built around the team. The big misconception for me is Zach Fisher you have Zach Williams, instantly better. Zach Williams, by my depth chart in what his output is, historically, you would have him as 
third, fourth best player that plays outside of the key positions. So that is a real thing. And I think he's got scope to be even higher than that. So that's a huge upgrade. He's obviously providing he stays fit. But, do you know what I mean? If spots and maybes, you've got to look at he will stay fit. Josh Honey, okay, he hardly ever played. He was a break glass in case of emergency. Drafty rookie. Lockie O'Brien played, what, a handful of games this year. Early doors, he was gone. Jackson Bins has gone ahead of him. He's already there if you're looking at depth. Right, Sam Philp, again, guy, we never saw him. He was the myth. And the same with Plowman. This could be a development player. So this could be someone that we start plowing a lot of time into Domaku. Uh, could be a late rookie pick, something like that. And Paddy Dow is Elijah Hollands. Now, a lot of misconceptions with Paddy Dow, that Paddy Dow could be a superstar and shit like that. Could be. But when you're the sixth, seventh best midfielder at your football club, that ain't ever happening. You can forget about that. That's not going to happen. So... Elijah Hollands, what is Elijah Hollands? It's very interesting that they've played him out in the pocket and half forward. Um, they haven't probably played him in his best position. Now, Elijah Hollands was one of my favourite players in his draft year, right? He was literally a guy that I really, really loved. And the big thing about Elijah Hollands is his best position before getting them ACLs is probably with his explosive pace, kind of playing that Cunningham role where he pinch hits in the midfield when you need him, that explosive, that particularly that explosive from stoppage. He's a very explosive footballer, and that hasn't been lost even with his VFL time, but also his ability to slot a high half forward and become that link and that conduit, right? Very good size as well, just under 190. Do you know what I mean? He's put the kegs on as well, but he's got an incredible engine, and he runs very like his brother, and he's a very high-impact player. And this is a player that needs a bit of TLC and a bit of love. And I suspect that this will cost a lot. I know Gold Coast are doing it. Now, what does that trade look like? This could be an interesting conundrum because if you watch my draft video that's up at the, that's coming up, I've done the top first-round picks. So that's the first picks with the matches. So it's about 24, 25 picks. You can see, I think, Gold Coast are going to be shocked where some of these players go. Because their talent pool is incredible. So there could be a loose argument that maybe one of Cowton's first rounders, well, their first picks, maybe 21, maybe 20, 22, maybe 25, it gets converted into something else, right? Gets converted to something else. And that could be because the points is actually, the 20s is the weirdest one. The drop off in points is quite big, right? You could see Cowton actually double up right, and get a couple of picks here, which would give them three picks in 20s and lose one, right? And you could see that because it will work out on the point system. Could be a real fascinating trade, that, but I don't think he'll cost a lot. I really don't. I think there's a lot of perusing there, right? Now, looking ahead to the future, there's a lot of talk that Carlton will trade up. Now, I can't see, based on the list, that Carlton will use their two picks now to go to pick eight. I don't think that will happen. Right, but they are targeting Geelong's pick is the rumor, which is around where Nate Caddy is. Now, Nate Caddy definitely is. I want you to see Nate Caddy as he's an undersized tall player. So he's basically like a Jack Silvani, but incredibly gifted and incredibly skillful. Where Jack has real tenacious effort, Nate Caddy has incredible skill, incredible skill, incredible game breaking ability. And he would be definitely someone based on what we've seen historically. If you can slot him in as that third toll, fourth toll, wow, he'll fly. Especially as a conduit, he's really good at linking his players in. So that could happen, but I think Carlton would have to do that maybe with something like a future first and pick 21, with getting a future second and A and doing another trade to get a few more picks because you can see how our list is at the moment. It definitely needs these picks. And I'm telling you now, outside of 40, you ain't getting much chop, right? probably outside of 30, if we're all honest. That's why Austin has done that trade, which at first value looks a little bit weak. Now, let's talk about the Camparellis. Now, currently on my draft board, I've got them, and I've just updated this. And as a general rule of thumb, my draft board at this stage of the season averages 3.8 position changes. And that genuinely changes with key position players because genuinely in the last year of their draft, they start playing the primary role. So it's a little bit like thinking Jacob Wheater in his first year, he, he wasn't the key defender as the responsible. It's his third and fourth year in this draft year where the key position players will play that poignant part. So the Camparellis, 
I would say good conversation. A, a, a real high end. So what I do is I look at high end rises with them being outside midfielders and one of them playing at half back and on the outside of midfield with pinch hitting in the ball. Genuinely, these guys fall anyway. They, they're not highly sought after, particularly historically with NGA and Father Sons. It's the top level players in the terms of key position and hard positions to do it. And they're in a draft pool where there is a lot of players that do this. So I would suspect a high end estimate 15 and 30 could be the worst case but you're looking at rough i mean 15 and 25 so you're looking roughly at worst case i've done this based on them finishing 19 for 20 which will be ridiculous if that happens that that'll be a real bad day in bosnia for Cowan. but that's 1500 points now 1500 points sounds a lot but it doesn't so remember you've got to have two picks to match them so and a historical trade let's say cow and finish Let's say let's say they finish second. That second round pick, that first round pick will be a thousand points, right? That'll be a very, very good trade there to trade down with another second. So if Calton have three seconds there, easily matched. Easily matched. Even with thirds, because you can go into deficit as well. But genuinely, it has not happened in the AFL in history, and it won't happen this time. Gold Coast have the anomaly where they have a projected, it's a lot of points. If you actually look at where Gold Coast players are meant to be taken, you are looking at a shitstorm of points and they have managed to do it. And next year, by the time, it's probably better to trade it next year as the hype gets. Count how easily do it. So you need to get this out of your head that we need points for the Camparellis. This is a very low-end bar. Even so much so that you've seen it this year that Eagle, that the Dogs have traded higher up to where their NGA is expected to go, their father and son, for a reason that they'll get two picks when they shouldn't really have two top 20 picks. It's a very simple system to manipulate, and it should be something that you shouldn't worry about. So that's a brief overview of where we are. I think we're in a real good position. Like I say, when you look at the ins and the outs, it's not going to be drastically hard for Carlton to fix it. Um very easy. With them picks in the 20s, there is definitely the players, and stay tuned for that. We'll go into that in a bit more depth, but there is plenty of options. So everyone hold your horses, because at the moment we haven't lost a top four player, and you only need roughly a depth chart of four players to play each position to win a flag. It is historical fact. So stay tuned. Look at the benefits. Jack Carroll's going to get more on bowl time now, which will develop him. He is technically a year younger than he is. Can't wait to see what Nick Austin does. Enjoy. Palm out. I see you rolling up over black Cadillac. High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad, oh, baby's having